evening, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, we would like to apologize for the technical difficulties and would like to welcome you to Prize Presentation Evening 2021. I'm your host, Amy Sproston, and our awards are brought to you live tonight, where we will celebrate and recognize student success from across the Potteries Educational Trust. We welcome you to share photos and comments on our YouTube live stream and share photos and comments on social media using our hashtag SFC Prize Evening 2021. But please do remember to be respectful. Usually, our awards ceremony would take place in person. However, as we are unable to do this, we have decided to bring the celebrations to you. All of our amazing winners tonight have received a party box, including a selfie stick, so please do share your photos with us. You can celebrate and make some noise with the party blowers. You can treat yourself with the pick and mix and popcorn provided. And of course, you can decorate the room with balloons. Finally, you will also receive an engraved trophy and also a keepsake program as a lasting memory of your fantastic achievements. So without further ado, I will hand you over to Mark Kent, Principal and CEO of the Potteries Educational Trust to formally welcome you to this evening's event. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mark Kent. I'm, I'm college principal and CEO of the Potteries Educational Trust. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to this year's virtual prize evening. Now, it never ceases to amaze me as I see the creativity, the ambition, the drive, the resourcefulness and the achievement of students at this college and indeed across the Potteries Educational Trust. Every one of the prize winners this evening display these qualities in abundance and you're all hugely deserving of the prizes you've been awarded. Now at this point, I'd like to say how pleased and proud I am that Moorside High School and Warrington Primary School are soon, from the 1st of April, to join the Potteries Educational Trust as full members of our learning community. And I'd like to warmly welcome both schools, your staff, your children, the communities you serve to this trust. And we really look forward to working with you over the coming months and years. Now back to this evening. There's something else that you prize winners all have in common. You have in the midst of the most difficult of years during a global pandemic shown a massive level of resilience. You don't give up when things are hard, but you determinedly stick at your task to see it through. So really, really well done. And in doing so, you've shown what great human beings you are, supporting those who struggle, those who need a helping hand or a kind word, those perhaps whose mental health is, is suffering during the pandemic we're all going through. And I'm so very proud of all of you, and you should be proud of yourselves for all you've achieved. So a massive well done. Now, of course, none of you could have, could have succeeded without the excellent support of your teachers, your family, your friends, and indeed the teachers in the schools that you came from before you moved on to this college. So let's take a moment to give them a virtual round of applause too. And the last thing I want to say is that as you look ahead to the future, remember the lessons you've learned being educated during a pandemic and being students at this sixth form college or in the schools within the Potteries Educational Trust. Remember always to be kind to those who need your help, who need that helping hand from you. Reach out to those in need. Remember too to aim high. Don't settle for second best. Indeed, graduates of this college and the trust are authors, they're scientists, head teachers, politicians, researchers, company directors, leaders of charities, and so much more. And you are part of this ambitious and successful educational family. So as you move on with your lives, do so with your heads held high. Keep at it when things get tough and make us proud of all you achieve in your future. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Mark. I now have the pleasure to introduce you to Joan Jarose, Chair of the Local Governing Body, and Martin Jones, Chair of the Board of Trustees, 
to offer their congratulations. As chair of the local governing body for the Sixth Form College, I'd like to welcome you to this special occasion. It's really good to get together to be able to celebrate the efforts and the achievements of students during what's been a very difficult year. I'm uh, Martin Jones. I'm the Deputy Vice-Chancellor at Staffordshire University, uh, your neighbour. I'm also the Chair of the Board of Trustees uh, of the Potteries Educational Trust. I'd like to extend uh, my welcome, uh, building on Mark's introduction, welcome to this virtual prize presentation evening uh, 2021. Can we thank all of our individual and organisational sponsors? Your generosity makes this evening even more special. So again, thank you. I'd like to extend my thanks to the 28 sponsors uh, that are providing the awards this evening. But my main reason for talking to you this evening is to congratulate all the students, all 55 students uh, today. I think your celebration uh, is important. Uh, your achievements uh, are key in terms of your skills and your progressions to work and your progressions to university. I think uh, you should be proud of what you've achieved in these awards uh, uh, this evening. It's been really tough for you students. I've had some Zoom conversations and other types of technology conversations with you. And what I've learned is that many of you say that you've added greater resilience, um, flexibility and stamina, actually, to what you have managed to put in your skill package. So well done with that. And obviously, they will take you forward into whatever you do next. Now, it has been a, a strange year, hasn't it? Um, it's a year ago since we were all locked down, so I think you need an extra round of applause. But I think for the resilience, determination, and the discipline that you've had as a learning community during the, the last 12 months of being uh, you know, kind of locked down, et cetera. So I think this event is doubly important because of what we've gone through as a learning community for 12 months. So I'd like to thank you for your determination and discipline as a learning community during this time period. I think it's really important that we acknowledge the work of both teaching and non-teaching staff this year. You've done such a great job in being flexible about the way that you deliver things so that students could continue to learn both at home and in college and then at home again and then back in college again. So thank you for that. And parents and people who support students, you've had it tough too. Um, I appreciate how hard you've worked to manage to give students what they needed to continue their learning in this very, very messy environment. This event is virtual as a leading dig digital university. I'm very proud uh, of the work that we're doing as a university, but also the work that we're doing in partnership uh, with the Sixth Form College, Pottery's Educational Trust. So this is an important event. Uh, it's a shame that we can't uh, join together in the LRV. I believe, though, there's more people uh, involved in this event than there would have been uh, in a physical event. So it is fantastic that we're able to come together as a learning and teaching community to celebrate the fantastic achievements of the students, not just at the Sixth Form College, uh, but our partners, Biddulph High School, Moorside High School and Warrington Primary School. So well done, all you students who are having prizes tonight, and indeed all the students who are not getting prizes. You've done remarkably well. Um, I wish you every good wish for your future. Have a great evening. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. I'd like to extend my thanks to Mark Kent and staff, not just at Sixth Form College, but also at Biddulph, uh, Moorside and Warrington. Thank you to Mark and staff uh, for the wonderful learning environment that we've managed to maintain over the last 12 months. Uh, and also thank you to all of you uh, for your presence online and your families and your friends that are hopefully with us this evening. Uh, and um, I'll now uh, hand you back over uh, to the formal proceedings. Thank you very much and good evening. Thank you, Joan and Martin. Now I'll pass you over to our guest speaker and former student, Adam Hughes, who will reflect on his time as a sixth form college student. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Adam Hughes and I am beyond delighted to be a part of your prize celebration evening lunch 
breakfast tea elevenses, whenever you happen to be watching this video. Yes, I will out myself now as an absolute loud and proud former Stoke Sixth Form student. It was about 10 ish years ago when I was attending my very own prize celebration evening when I was sitting right where you are, well, not quite right where you are now. You're probably at home or upstairs or something, and I don't really know you that well, so not right where you are now, but in the college itself in the time before the pre-pandemic. Yes, it was real. We lived it, and it was then that we had our prize celebration evening and I remember the feeling, I remember the pride, the acknowledgement, the excitement, the feeling of achievement that I had at that time and it's a feeling you must all be having right now. I also remember our guest speakers back then as local MPs, people of renown, people who'd done inspirational things and you can thank COVID that you've got me. Um, who's done none of that, but also has some things to talk about and to tell. I've been asked to be your guest speaker, mainly, I think, to talk about what I've been up to since I was a sixth form college student, to talk a little bit about the things that maybe I've learned, the little pieces of information or advice that have come to me that I've picked up over the past 10 years, and to package them as useful little nuggets for all of you wonderful, inspirational young people. I've taken complete inspiration from many third-rate YouTubers and have taken the approach of putting together a little listicle, a little list-based piece that has three key things that I have learned over the past 10 years that I'm saying could be of use to you. Now, you can't really hold me to that. That was a verbal commitment. There's nothing in writing. You know, you can't come after me with pitchforks if you don't find any of this useful. Um, you won't find me even. I've not given anyone my address. Um, so don't even try. But if these are of use to you, then please grab them, run with them, and make of them what you will. First up, when I was a sixth form college student, I discovered how important it was to find my thing. Not anatomically, but in terms of my passion, what was it that got me excited, that got me energized, that got me inspired to want to achieve? For many of you, you've won prizes this evening, this afternoon, because you have excelled in certain topics and certain subjects. And that is probably an indicator that that might be your thing. Maybe you really love English. Maybe you really love languages. Maybe you're obsessed with biology, who knows, but that might be your thing. It was at the sixth form that I found mine. When I came to the college, I knew that there were certain topics and subjects that I really enjoyed, but I had no idea what might grow to be the focus of my life, what would grow to be the inspiration that I would jump on and commit to and make my future out of. And it was as a student at the sixth form that I learned what that would be for me. And the shirt maybe gave it away, um, but it was performing arts. It was drama, it was music, and also written arts as well, English literature. And it was in studying A-levels and those topics that I learned that that was exactly what fired me up. And I can't tell you the difference that that gave me in mindset. Once you discover, once you lock on to those passion points, the world changes. You, you start to see a route. You start to see a path ahead that I'd not seen before. And it's a powerful feeling. It's a feeling so many of you will already be familiar with. And it's a feeling that if you're not yet familiar with, I encourage you to think about, find it. What is it that just makes you go, that's it. That is what I want to look at, to focus on, to delve into for the rest of my life. And once you've found it, what do you do next? You commit to it. You commit to your thing. And that's the second lesson that I have discovered over the past 10 years, that you can have your passion, you can have your subject, your topic that you know fires you up, and you should really commit to it once you discover it, because there is no better way of spending your 
life. There is no better way of proceeding and progressing than to grasp and jump on and really power through with whatever it is that you are inspired by. Again, for me, it was music, and that's what I decided to do. Once I got my four A-levels from the Sixth Form College, once I got them in my back pocket, I looked ahead to go to university, and I decided that I would commit to studying music and performance. And it's not easy to commit. It really isn't. I mean, you've only got to ask my partner of 11 years about my track record with commitment. And you'll, you'd will you know that commitment doesn't come easy to me, and it didn't when I was a student either. Um, you've got so many options, so many routes to go down, so many choices. Um, but it was an inspiring teacher at the time, at sixth form, who I don't think is there anymore, so I won't, won't name drop, um, who talked to me about powering through with your excitement to proceed down the route that fires you up because whether it's studying at university or whether it's going into a career if you enjoy and love what you do you're going to enjoy and love your life and that was my experience i went off to university i went to the university of durham a place of green and bright red chinos and gowns and street cobbles and the northeast accent which i now am obsessed with and adored every single second of it. I was studying something I loved. I met people who I adored and I've got lifelong friends and connections as a result of it. Commit, commit to your thing, pursue it, see where it takes you. And I think you'll be delighted. As anyone who is committed to anyone will tell you what's exceptionally important after commitment is flexibility, the ability to be flexible. And I learned that whilst I was at university, and it was one of the biggest lessons that has impacted my life in the hugest of ways. At college, I knew what I loved, at university, committed to it, jumped on it, developed my craft, but also I discovered other sides to it. And I also took a course alongside in arts marketing, which was something I'd never really thought I might be interested in. Um, I know I can talk, I know I can blag a conversation, and I know I've got floppy hair and all those things tend to align quite well with marketing, but I had no idea that I would have the skill set to transition into that kind of space. And it was only by being flexible enough to say, actually, my worldview might be that I want to go and perform, but let's try something else, that I discovered what would become really more my future than anything else. That arts marketing course taught me that my passion for performance could segue and transition into something completely different and something exciting that drew on all sorts of different passions. And it was from there that when I left university, I proceeded to do a master's degree because I discovered how much I loved the analytical side of my subject, but also to start working in marketing. Did a stint in G1, funnily enough. Um, that might be why I'm on this conversation. Um, but also proceeded from there to start my own charity, to found a charity up here in the north where I'm now based, um, that is all about giving arts a home, giving arts a voice and a place. And in that role as the owner of a charity, what I do more than anything is draw on my experiences that I learned at the college and at university, the experience to be flexible, the knowledge of my subject, but also the awareness that there are other things that I can do with it. There are other ways I can take it in other angles because of flexibility. So they're my big three takeaways, really. It's about knowing and finding your thing, committing the hell to that thing, and then not getting too hung up on a very rigid definition of what your future might be, but to be flexible, to accept that things go in different ways and that your passion can translate into really interesting and diverse ways if you let it. But finally, what I really want to say is congratulations to every single one of you for the inspirational hard work that you have put in over the past 12 months. No one, no one, no one, no one could have foreseen that 12 months have passed in the way that they have passed. They've been ultimately unique in so many ways, so many challenging, difficult ways, but you have powered through. You have learned that you are not just students, you're, you're super students. You have resilience coming out of your ears. You've learned that you can not just knuckle down and get on with your work in a pandemic, that you can adjust, you can adapt, that you can thrive and show your teachers and your parents, you must be so proud, that you can excel 
during a lockdown. So my advice to you more than anything is remember that. No matter what you go off to do, no matter what you decide to do, remember that you are the class, you are the year that powered through a pandemic to not just learn, but excel. You're inspirational and you should all be phenomenally proud of that fact. Remember it, hold on to it and take it with you. Because if you can power through a pandemic, you can nail anything. So go and nail it. Go and do it. Well done. Bye. Thank you, Adam. Now let's take a quick look at social media. Pottery's Educational Trust Day, congratulations to our four Pottery's Educational Trust Advisors, who will be virtually receiving awards tonight. We are looking forward to this evening's celebration. University of Derby say congratulations to all of the sixth form students celebrating their achievements at Virtual Prize presentation evening tonight. Thank you so much for getting involved and please do keep sending your comments using our hashtag. Let the award ceremonies commence. I would like to announce the first category of awards for this evening, which is the Business Finance and Law Pathway, Education Society and Health Pathway and the Sports and Leisure Pathway. I'll pass you over to Natalie Dunn, Assistant Director of Teaching, Learning and Assessment, who will be presenting the awards for the Business, Finance and Law Pathway. Thank you, Amy. Um, I'd just like to start by saying a huge congratulations. Um, you're all such deserving winners. Um, you've shown real positivity and resilience in what's been a really challenging year. The awards for the Business, Finance and Law Pathway are as follows. The Barrington's Prize for Business and Finance goes to Megan Dale. The George Leonard Barber Prize for Criminology is awarded to Amelia Tompkinson. The Freitas Prize for Law is given to Laura Hermanovic. And finally, the Keele University Pathway Prize for Business and Law goes to Shakur Saki. Well done, everyone. Good evening, everyone. My name's Phil McPherson. Uh, I'm one of the directors of teaching, learning and assessment at the Sixth Home College. Uh, really proud and privileged to be uh, making these award announcements this evening. Um, I'll start off by presenting the awards for Education, Society and Health Pathway. So first up, the Keele University School of Psychology Prize for Psychology goes to Inia Bint Ahmed. The Old Hanleyasian W.M. Wilson Prize for Sociology goes to Sophie Swan. The Higher Horizons Health and Social Care Prize for Excellence goes to Chloe Marison. The Higher Horizons Health and Social Care Prize for Determination goes to May Sawyer. The following three prizes are all sponsored by the Keele University School of Geography, Geology and the Environment. So the prize for geology goes to Joseph Gallagher. The prize for geography goes to Rebecca Marsh. And the prize for environmental science goes to Harriet May Wimpany. And then the final prize in the ESH pathway is the University of Derby Pathway Prize for Education, Society and Health. And I'm very proud to say that this goes to Ellie Cheadle. So many congratulations to all of the amazing prize winners from Education, Society and Health. The second pathway prizes that I'll be announcing are for sport and leisure. So the first prize is the Rebecca Amerson Memorial Prize for Physical Education, and that goes to Jacob Booth. The second prize is the Steve Holding Memorial Prize for Public Services, and that goes to Ellie Dean. The Duke of Edinburgh Steve Holding Memorial Prize goes to Amy Condilliff. The Fenton Manor Prize for volunteering 
goes to Rosie Tomkinson. The Stoke City FC Prize for Outstanding Sporting Achievement goes to Megan Knight. The Port Vale FC Prize for Sport goes to Teo Beck. And the, finally, the Staffordshire University Pathway Prize for the Sports and Leisure Pathway goes to Daniel Rogers. And again, many, many congratulations to all of those amazing students across the Sport and Leisure Pathway. Very, very proud. Huge congratulations. The Business and Finance and Law Pathway brings together a range of academic and vocational qualifications. Um, with only four prizes available, it's a very competitive field and the students that have been awarded these prizes have been exceptional. Um, they've demonstrated resilience, hard work and positivity throughout a really difficult academic year. Uh, I was very happy when I got the email. I was surprised because, you know, it's been a, a long road and also studying from home and everything, and not a stress. So I was very happy to get an award. Well, when I called my dad, he was very happy. I mean, he hasn't, been, he hasn't seen me in a while. And then he just said that his son is going to win an award. So he was proud and he actually thought I received it by email. So he, he was actually rushing to send him the award, but I said, they'll give it to me in the event. Well, at the moment, university, I've applied for Warwick and Derby to do uh, accounting and finance. The Education, Society and Health pathway includes earth sciences, social sciences and health and social care, bringing together a diverse range of students with a wide range of skills being developed. The criteria when choosing these students has been creativity, academic excellence and a commitment to going into their chosen career. I feel very proud of myself, especially because of the last year when everybody was struggling for motivation and it feels really good to have my work be recognised. My parents are very proud of me. My next steps are to go and study philosophy, ethics and religion at the University of Chester. To be successful in courses in the sport and leisure pathway, students need to be dedicated and be able to communicate with a wide range of participants. Uh, the students awarded the prizes for this pathway have shown dedication and commitment to furthering those extracurricular activities in a really difficult year. Uh, I'm very grateful. Um, obviously, been working through uh, one or two lockdowns. It's been uh, tough especially with not as much support as you'd normally get but um, I've worked through it I've worked hard and I'm glad it's been uh, recognized by the teachers in the college and yeah I'm very happy that I've been given it and hopefully I can you know continue with what I'm doing and then you know show that as I go on throughout my career and then say oh I've done this and then keep just keep it up like that. <laughs> they were over the moon actually they were like i can't believe that i can't believe I actually won something for once but yeah no they're, they're really proud and um i'm glad i'm making them proud you know that's you know your number one duty as a as a child uh, yeah they're, they're just very proud and i'm glad that i'm making them proud and obviously they're seeing the progress that i'm doing so after college going to study at university doing physical education and youth sport coaching, and then hopefully going on to a postgraduate study after that for um, primary school teaching, but with like uh, physical education aspects, and then just go down the PE teaching routes. And then hopefully with that, get um, some more coaching qualifications, get as many as I can, especially in football, and try to go down the coaching route within football and within academy. Welcome back. Now let's take another check-in to social media. 
Uh, so here we've got a post on Instagram from the humanities department at Stoke Sixth Form and also a post from the creative and performing arts department. Again, please do keep sending in your photos and comments using our hashtag. Uh, and now onto the second category of awards for the evening, which is creative and performing arts pathway, followed by the humanities, languages and literature pathway. I'll pass you over to Jeff Wills, Director of Teaching, Learning and Assessment, to present the awards for creative and performing arts. Good evening. I'm immensely proud to introduce the prizes for the creative and performing arts. Uh, this is a very special pathway, and to win a prize in this pathway is indeed to be special. This is a pathway which values, nurtures, and promotes creativity, originality, problem solving, independent thinking, teamwork and collaboration, and above all, a bit of perseverance, resilience, and sheer grit. To excel in this pathway, you have to be the real deal, the whole package. Uh, I'm immensely proud of the students and I'm immensely proud of the staff that I've been privileged to work with. And to be the real deal and the real package, that's the students I'm about to name now who've excelled in an area where to excel is to really stand out. So. Let me name the prize winners for this evening. Uh, the Stoke School Sport Partnership Prize for Performing Arts, Sarah Porter. The Keele University Foundation Year Prize for Creative Arts, Ava Mayer. The Lawrence Davis Prize for Digital Arts, Leon Dawson. The Carson Waterman Prize for Endeavor in the Arts, Thomas Bamber. The Staffordshire University Pathway Prize for Creative and Performing Arts, Ellie Chidlow. Students, very special indeed. There is one more student uh, that I am proud to mention by name this evening, and that is Shane Deneen. Shane was an outstanding exemplary CAP student of whom we are particularly proud. He progressed with us over three years first as a level three foundation student, and then as an accomplished and highly successful, flourishing student of graphics and art. Shane progressed to go to university to do fine art. Shane was at the heart of the CAP community, a vibrant, positive, lovely student. Tragically, Shane died earlier this year, cutting short a life that was rich and full of promise. We are proud to remember him as one of our own. We at the college are determined that the memory of Shane will remain in college. And in his honor and memory, we are proud to announce that we have established the Shane Deneen Memorial Prize for Excellence in Creative and Performing Arts. In years to come, we hope that other students who share some of Shane's promise and indeed his humanity will be fortunate to be awarded this prize. So in a pathway full of special students, this evening we remember one very special student, Shane Deneen. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alex Parks, Assistant Director of Teaching, Learning and Assessment. <clears throat> As always, there was terrific competition for prizes in humanities, languages and literature this year. Students past and present are worthy winners of the following prizes. The old Hanley Enzian Prize for History goes to Emily Richer. There are two winners of the Mary Bishop Prize for Eng English Literature and they are Amelia Groundsell and Daisy Whitfield. There are also two winners of the Mary Bishop Prize for English Language, and they are Arshia Kadir and Hannah Seaver. The old Hanleyensian G.W. Dolbell Prize for MFL goes to Lauren Britton. The Methodist Book Center Prize for Humanities goes to Izzy Dobson, 
The Hilda Hume Prize for Classical Civilizations goes to Loki Wilson. The Staffordshire Chamber of Commerce Prize for Politics goes to Amy Oakes. And finally, the Manchester Metropolitan University Pathway Prize for Humanities, Languages and Literature goes to Iona Eyre. Congratulations again to all our winners. I would now like to introduce our winner's showcase. The prize for humanities uh, at Sixth Form College this year, we want to give to one of our, our ex-students who is Izzy Dobson. Izzy is a fantastic student of, of religious studies, uh, very highly motivated, uh, highly intelligent, uh, excellent work ethic, and above all, a wonderful ability to kind of organize the, the staff and, and to, to follow uh, the schedule uh, in very high, high marks. And we're really pleased and delighted that Izzy was able to go on and progress to Oxford University. Also in humanities, we have a politics prize. Politics has uh, joined the humanities department uh, this year. So we now have five subjects. And the politics prize goes to one of our current students, who is Amy Oakes. And Amy has been nominated uh, for, for progress in politics, for having a, a decent start to, to the course, but really flourishing during uh, lockdown, uh, really uh, coming into her own and moving her marks up from the first year to, to the second year. So the politics prize uh, for progress goes to Amy Oakes. Loki's my prize winning student for classical civilization this year. He came to college from uh, a background of being home educated, but he's taken to the college environment like a duck to water. Absolutely fascinated with the subject whether he's studying Greek temples or following the fortunes of Roman and Greek heroes uh, or exploring what went on in the amphitheater. He's very engaged and performs consistently at a, a hugely high level. We've nominated Emily Richard for the History Prize this year. She's a student who combines a real a natural flair for the subject with an incredibly hard working ethic. Uh, when she started the course, she was very quiet, completely unaware of the huge potential she had. Uh, by the end, she was confidently dealing with any of the tasks that came her way, achieved great success, and I'm pretty sure in the future we'll go on to get even more. The College English Prize is called the Mary Bishop Prize. And uh, the name was given in memoriam of uh, the wife of a former English teacher at the college. And the prize is awarded by the trustees of the Mary Bishop Prize. They have complete discretion over who wins. We submit work and they decide who the rightful winners are. The prize is awarded for several uh, different things. First of these is for sheer excellence in English, for high achievement and hard work. But it's also given for those who've overcome some obstacle in order to exceed expectations. We have four winners and they're all very worthy. Our four winners are for literature, Amelia Groundsell and Daisy Whitfield, and for language, Asha Kadir and Hannah Seaver. In a year when it's been very difficult to decide who's going to be given the prize for one language, we decided to um, award it to Lauren Britton this year. In a group where it was very difficult, as I say, to decide because of such a talent that exists, but Lauren's been very dedicated to her studies and also shown a real determination to succeed in all the skill areas and wants to take her studies through to the next stage, along with uh, maths, uh, for which I wish her the very best of luck. It's with great pleasure to reward four awards to students in the Creative and Digital Arts Department. These students have demonstrated creativity, resilience, and absolutely superb practical work. Tom Bamber has been able to link his games design work alongside product design, bringing one of his 3D sketches into his 3D environment in the Unreal Engine. Leon Dawson has demonstrated excellent graphic and design skills in both graphics and media studies. Ava, our GCSE media student, not only has worked hard towards what would have been her exam, has also demonstrated fantastic design and layout skills for her GCSE media coursework. In Ellie Chidlow, we've seen superb cinematography and photography work in her two subjects, TV and film and A-level photography. Hi, Sarah. This is Richard speaking to you virtually. I am so proud of you. 
I miss watching your beautiful dancing so much. You are such a gifted, special, stunning dancer. I can even just visualize you now, just your legs flying up in the dance studio. It was, you were just beautiful to watch. You showed so much resilience in a hard year, having to do all those auditions virtually. That is a challenge. Um, you were up for it and you got into Performers College, which is one of the top conservatoires in the whole of the country, which is absolutely amazing. You really are a thinking dancer as well. You are so intelligent, balancing three very academic A-levels with your BTEC dance course. Um, and you managed it with elegance, grace, and ease. Um, please come back and see me. Yeah, I hope it's going well. And just from me to finish, just hands. You take care. Now let's see what's happening on social media. Uh, Charles Freeman says, congratulations to all of the prize winners. You deserve your moments of glory. Welcome to the Trust More side and Warrington. What an exciting future we have. Michael Astley says, congratulations to all of the staff and students, especially the ones who attended St. Peter's C of E Academy. Now, moving on and doing things a little bit differently, I would like to introduce the winner showcase for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Hi folks, welcome to the penultimate award section for the STEM. Obviously it would really be the ultimate award section as STEM is obviously the best pathway. Uh, my name's Ed Swan and I'm the director of STEM. Now we were asked to do a bit of creativity uh, for these awards. So amongst the STEM team, we decided to uh, compose a KN uh, for each of our award winners, which is a poem of praise. And to add an element of audience participation, we want you to guess who they are as we go through this video. So they will not be named and we'll avoid any identifying features, but we will tell you why they won the award. Thank you. Arriving from Fisley Hoff, they've proved a true science buff. A keen member of MDV, we're all sure we will soon see a great future for this nominee. Coming to us from Endon, we hope they don't abandon their desire for biochemistry. This prize is for their mastery of mathematical complexity. At Oxford University, we know that they'll go far. Can you guess who they are? Right, attesting to their lack of passion for mathematics, this prize is for knowing their aliphatics. While they have now moved on to Sheffield with a desire to work in the health field, with these A-style grades, they are clearly erudite, who is now in the spotlight. They joined from a school named for a knight. Subject with bite was clearly their birthright. This award their computing powers does enshrine. They could often be found over dinner with Abbott in G49. Are you this particular winner? Even though they've already left us, the biological inside gave them an A+. Now they're at Nottingham, combining chemistry with their program. And so this ends our prize affirmation. Was this your individual's nomination? Having joined us with a five and an eight, it soon proved in college that they did test loads. We're hoping this poem does not obfuscate their physics insight, which seems innate. In whatever they choose to do, we know they'll succeed. Is this you? Winning the prize for applied biology whilst alongside studying sociology is no mean feat, actually, for this student from Birch's Head Academy. We know they fill their teachers' hearts with glee. Are you this prize nominee? Back to me for the final STEM winner, with endless determination within her. Despite what the future may hold, we are sure we'll eventually behold this person in full medical attire, as is their attested desire. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alicia Stevens, the Assistant Director of Teaching, Learning and Assessment for the STEM Pathway. I'll be presenting half of the STEM prize way, uh, prizes and then handing over to Ed Swan, who's the Director of Teaching, Learning and Assessment, who's going to present the rest. But first of all, I would like to say a huge congratulations to all of our STEM winners. We're very proud of you. The first award is the Old Hanleyensian W.M. Wilson Jim Hume Memorial Prize for Mathematics, and that's awarded to Lily Massey. Next is the Academics Prize for Biology which goes to Sophie Millwood. 
The Staffordshire University Prize for Applied Human Biology is awarded to Raisa Rashid. And the North Midland Science Learning Partnership Prize for Chemistry goes to Hannah Barlow. Well done to all of you. And over now to Ed to present the rest. Good evening, folks. I'm Ed, the director of STEM at the Sixth One College. I'd just like to have a quick couple of minutes to just reflect on what Adam said earlier as also an alumni of the college. I would like all the people listening today to commit to have an amazing future and for all their future experiences. I'd like you to be flexible about the path you take in life and the different challenges you'll face ahead and congratulate you on the prizes that you've won this evening. Thank you. The winner of the old Hanley Enzian Jeff Horn Memorial Prize for Physics, Joe Whitmore. Well done. The winner of the Synetic Solution Prize for Computing, James Croxton. The winner of the Michelin Prize for BTEC Applied Science, TJ Ellis Dale. And finally from STEM, the winner of the Somerville College University of Oxford Prize for Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics, Cassandra Bethel. Well done all. Thank you. We would like to thank the directors and assistant directors for presenting the Pathway Awards and would like to congratulate all of our winners so far. Now, on to our final awards category for the evening, which is College Prizes. I'll pass you back over to the Principal and CEO of the Potterby's Educational Trust, Mark Kent, to present the awards. Thank you, Amy. So, now to the College Prizes. The first prize is the Sydney Sussex College University of Cambridge Prize for Outstanding Performance. And this prize goes to Tyler Burks. Tyler joined the college from Clayton Hall Academy with a good set of GCSEs. He was admitted to the college's High Achievers Programme and elected to study four A-levels at the college, Maths, Further Maths, Computer Science and Economics, in which he secured a stunning four A-star grades. He also applied for and was selected for the OCR Cambridge Scholarship Programme, which sees him paid to study at Cambridge University during his undergraduate degree. Tyler is now studying uh, economics at Girton College at the University of Cambridge. So really well done, Tyler. The second prize is the Doris Robinson Prize for Service to the College. And this prize goes to Carenza Price. Carenza was a really valuable member of the college community during her time at the Sixth Form College. Through her role as student governor, she contributed to positive changes in the fabric and culture of the college. She's the type of person to contribute as much as she takes out. She was an asset to the student body and has continued to support the college's work as part of our alumni. Being elected as student governor gave Carenza many challenges, but also opportunities. And she used these to good effect, developing new skills, which have served her well at university. So really well done, Carenza. The next prize, the Doris Robinson Prize for Service to the College, is awarded to Finley Gordon McCusker. Finley is a very hardworking and resilient student. Finley is extremely polite and caring. He's been a course representative and governor for the college, demonstrating strong leadership qualities and a vigor for public speaking. Finley has faced some challenges with his health, which meant he had to give up his governor role. But despite this, Finley continued to work and to be committed to his studies, and he's kept up to date with all his work. Finley has applied to Keele University, where he wishes to study international business business management, and HR and politics. And at this point, I'm going to hand over to Claire Gagan and Joe Finn, who are going to introduce the next two college prize winners. Okay, good evening, everyone. My name's Joe Finn, and I'm the Safeguarding Manager. So I'm here to give the award for the Stoke-on-Trent Rotary Club Prize for Progress. 
Uh, I'm really honoured to be here tonight giving this prize to Lorne, or as we like to refer to her, our Lornikins. So she's going to be really mad at me for saying that on screen tonight now. Um, Lorne, we're so very proud of you, everything that you've achieved over the last couple of years. Um, we also have got a really great relationship with Lorne and her family. Um, and it's it's just been an honour, really, getting to know you, being able to be part of your support package while you've been here at college. Um, so proud that you're going on to university in September um, and going to Manchester. Now, for anybody who knows Lani well, they would know that Lani, um, when she was much younger, said, Mom, Mom, I can't wait to go to university. And the university that I can't wait to go to is Cobridge. And what she actually meant was Cambridge. Um, so not quite Cambridge for September, but um, Manchester is still amazing, Lorne. Really, really well done. And uh, I promised the family that I'd give them a wave. So hi, everyone. OK, I'll hand over to Claire. Good evening, everyone. I'm Claire Gagan, and I'm one of the assistant principals. I'm so pleased to be able to be here to award Layla Bleakley the Student Services Morris Mosley Memorial Prize. The past year has been very difficult for all of us, but one ray of sunshine in our lives of the staff who've been at college throughout lockdown one, two and three has been our Layla Cherub. She attended college throughout lockdown and she always brought a smile to our face. She worked so hard and it got to a point where Layla did refer to it, refer to us as saying, I don't really know how I feel about everyone coming back because I really like just having the college to myself. Um, we've got, we have code threes, which is a brew and a biscuit at three o'clock and Layla really enjoyed those and we got to learn so much about her. Layla is set on being a doctor and I would like to say Layla you could look after me and any member of my family and I'd be honoured for that you're going to have a wonderful life and you're going to be amazing so Dr Layla Cherub well done thank you Claire and Joe Moving on to the next uh, college prize winners. The next prize is the Royal Dalton Extended Project Qualification Prize. And this prize goes to Geoffrey Watson. Jeff was an EPQ student who produced an outstanding dissertation on French New Wave cinema. The research he conducted was extensive and the final outcome was a high quality piece of academic writing. At each stage of the project, Jeff excelled and committed himself wholeheartedly. His final presentation of his findings was one of the best presentations that the college has seen in recent years, and that's saying something. Jeff is a truly exceptional student who produced a truly exceptional piece of work. So many, many congratulations, Jeff. The next prize is the Principal's Prize for a Level 3 Foundation student, and this prize goes to Azina Sheikhmaus. Azina arrived in the UK from Syria last year. She's performed exceptionally well in her GCSE marks, scoring the highest mark within the GCSE cohort of a grade 9-8. Azina has performed really well in previous assessments and has shown real progress in lessons. She continuously works hard and has shown real perseverance when challenged with difficult questions. So really well done, Azina. The next prize is the Principal's Prize for a Level 3 student. And this prize goes to Grace Hall. Grace is an outstanding student. Grace excels in all her subjects. Her talents and abilities are so broad and wide ranging. Grace has a refreshing love of learning which is demonstrated in the scope and depth of her independent reading, which encompasses a wide variety of undergraduate level tasks. She is synoptic in her vision and understanding, drawing on different subjects and different areas 
of her subjects to shed new and original light on questions and problems. She combines academic brilliance with genuine humility. Grace is always willing to work with others and dialogue with fellow students in the classroom, treating them as partners and collaborators in her quest for understanding. Grace is a natural scholar who will excel both at university and beyond. So really well done, Grace. And now we move on to the four Potteries Educational Trust prizes. And there is going to be one prize winner for each of the four institutions represented in the family of the trust. And the first prize goes to a, a student from Warrington Primary School. And that uh, person is Maisie Jackson. Maisie's attitude to learning is exemplary. She clearly loves learning, but is also extremely intrinsically motivated. Not only is she willing to take responsibility for her own progress, she also takes immense pride in everything she does. Maisie thrives on challenge, but she's also shown great resilience when, when required. This has been particularly noticeable during the most recent lockdown, where she's continued to thrive in spite of adversity. Her determination to succeed is admirable. She has a relentless passion to improve and works so hard all the time. It's fair to say that she leaves no stone unturned in her drive towards excellence and takes every opportunity, even in spite of minor setbacks, as an opportunity to learn and improve. And so Maisie shines in many subject areas. Even though Maisie has made fantastic progress across many areas of the curriculum, she's still modest and unassuming individual whose mantra of everyday excellence reaches beyond her academic aspirations. It's clear that Maisie has a robust moral compass. She shows fantastic judgment, even in challenging situations, and sets a superb example to others. She's willing to help others too, using kindness and friendship. Her positive can-do attitude and optimism rub off on her peers and make any learning environment a brighter place just for her presence. Maisie doesn't just embody the values of Warrington Primary School, but also those of the Potteries Educational Trust. Maisie, we're really proud of you, of how much you've developed during your time at Warrington Primary School. And we're safe in the knowledge that whatever path you choose to follow, you'll do your utmost to be the best version of yourself that you can possibly be. So really well done, Maisie. And then to the prize winner from Moorside High School. And this prize goes to Trudy Allen. Trudy is an extremely hardworking and really motivated and enthusiastic student who embodies a fantastic attitude towards everything she does at school. She embraces all the challenges set to her and her work is always of a very high standard. Trudy has dedicated herself to being a role model within the high school. She's supportive of staff and other students, and indeed has supported many other students with their work as well. She always offers to volunteer at school events and has helped out at most open evenings and parents' evenings. Trudy always thinks of others and always looks to support others. So Trudy, really well done. And the next prize winner goes to the student from Biddulph High School. And this prize winner is Callum Harrop. Callum is an outstanding student, a real ambassador for Biddulph High School. Callum has worked very hard at both school and within the local community, proving himself to be a real inspiration to his peers. Throughout the pandemic, Callum has completed his schoolwork to a very high standard, whilst at the same time being a key worker in a local supermarket contributing to local food banks, helping elderly neighbors who are shielding and completing voluntary work for a local cafe. Callum has demonstrated his passion and his dedication towards his studies and the wider community and a worthy winner of the Pet Prize uh, as a representative of Biddulph High School. So really well done, Callum. And then the Pet Prize for a sixth form college student goes to Tia Pashley. Tia 
has worked consistently hard throughout her time at the Sixth Form College and to a very high standard. Tia is both an extremely focused and conscientious student, but also a very, a very friendly and approachable student. Tia is an intelligent and dedicated student, and her research into medicine has been extensive. She not only thrives academically, but also socially, as she, she took every opportunity to further herself whilst at the Sixth Form College. And indeed, as one of Tia's teachers, I can honestly say she has worked so hard uh, whilst at the Sixth Form College. And not only that, not only her academic ability is worth celebrating, but her care and concern for her fellow students. So really, really well done, Tia. And congratulations to you. Congratulations indeed, as, the, as we come now uh, towards the end of our prize evening, congratulations again to every single winner of uh, uh, this uh, evening's event, every single winner that we've celebrated this evening. You've all done brilliantly well and we're so proud of every single one of you. And now to some thank yous. My first thank you is to the compa for the evening, to Amy Sprotson, who's done a brilliant job. I'm sure everyone would agree. So really well done, Amy. So brilliant, well done. My second thank you. We have, uh, as you've heard already, um, a range of sponsors for our prizes at the Sixth Form College. Every single sponsor. Um, we're so grateful for the uh, for the money and the thought you you put into these uh, to, the, to these prize awards. Thank you so much for your support for the Sixth Form College and indeed for the Pottery's Educational Trust as well. Thank you. My next thanks goes to uh, the amazing people behind the scenes who are just helping making all of this uh, evening go so smoothly. So to Georgia, to Sarah, to Lisa, to Sally, to everyone involved uh, in, in, in your team. Brilliant and really well done. So thank you. And uh, just finally, in the, the backroom crew, as it were, um, so huge thanks to Tom and to Kim and to Richard, uh, who sort of coordinated the technology, the camera, uh, and done a brilliant behind the scenes job. So really huge thank you to you guys. And, and not in my script, because um, Rachel sent me uh, the, the, the people I needed to thank, and, and obviously forgot about herself. So I just want to say huge thank you to Rachel for all her support as well. So thank you, Rachel. <laughs> and now as we approach the, the end of our evening, I'm going to hand back over to Amy with a, a final few words. So Amy. Thank you. Now let's take a final check in to social media. So we've got Paul Magnell saying congratulations to all the prize winners this evening. Thanks to all of the staff who helped the students along the way. Lovely to hear Adam in full flow once again. We've got Kathy Plum saying well done classicists. Loki, Iona, Amelia and Arshia. Uh, Dr. Sona Gupta saying well done Lauren. And Dawn from Lawrence Davis is very proud to sponsor an award and also says well done. Again, a massive congratulations to all of our winners. It really has been an incredible evening with inspirational speakers, creative winner showcases, and not forgetting the incredible, hardworking and talented students who are so deserving of this awards evening tonight. Thank you all so much for joining us. We hope you've had an incredible evening and good night. <laughs>